Are you still asking yourself the question, what is the difference between a Zoom webinar and a Zoom meeting? Are you still struggling with what is the difference between the concept of the functionalities between what a webinar does and what a meeting does? And ultimately, which one should you be using for your online business? Well, don't worry, I've got you covered because in this video, I'm gonna walk and talk you through everything about the differences between a Zoom webinar and the differences between a Zoom meeting. And by the end of this video, you'll know which one is right for you. So all I'm gonna do now is jump on over into one of my Zoom accounts and show you around. So here we are, I've just signed in and I've just gone to the webinar tab. And if you haven't actually upgraded, you will just see the meetings tab and it will actually say, you probably need to upgrade to actually get the webinars. But we've just done a launch, so we've actually got the webinars enabled. If you haven't watched my previous video on how to launch with webinars, go and watch that now or go and watch that after this video because I'll walk and talk you through how to actually set up those webinars. But as we've got webinars in enabled, I can just schedule a webinar and talk you through this entire process. So I'm gonna schedule out a test webinar. So I'm just gonna keep it as my webinar and I'm just gonna put test. So some of the things to look for when actually scheduling out a webinar. And uh, I don't want any templates. Uh, when, uh, it doesn't really matter what time because I'm gonna be putting this. Uh, maybe let's schedule it for in a week's time. Uh, one hour is good, London time is good. I don't want this as a recurring webinar. Um, now this is really important. If you're gonna be using a webinar template or a webinar meeting room, authentication. You either ask your audience uh, or tell your audience you need this code, uh, this webinar passcode to, to log in. But I like to actually just make them sign in or authenticate, uh, sign into their own Zoom account, just so it means they need a one-time download of Zoom um, and they can actually then sign in by authenticating. And there's no back and forth uh, with whatever passcodes. Now, hosts and panelists, um, I would just leave the, the video off for now. And then this is really important here. Enable q and I'm gonna talk you through, I'm gonna open up a live uh, webinar room and a live meeting room and show you the differences in a second, but make sure your Q&A is enabled because you wanna encourage your audience to ask questions and then also enable practice sessions. And then here, if you have any other um, co-hosts or panelists that you wanna to invite to the meeting so they can present on that same webinar as you, you can add those in here, just add in their email address. You might have to buy another license for them if you want them to co-host, but if it's just a panelist, you can actually uh, do that after you've scheduled this out. So I'm just gonna hit schedule. So there we are, that only took a few seconds to save your webinar. And it's really important to note here, if you have an audience that you want this webinar to go out to, copy this link, because this is the attendee uh, link. So invite all attendees via this link. If you wanted uh, someone to actually join as a panelist, say if you're interviewing someone, uh, or if somebody else is gonna present for you, you can actually edit the panelists, input a name, input their email address, and they will get a separate link. It's not the attendee link. So actually there's potentially three links. Um, it's either the host link, like your link, or your co-host link, a panelist link, which is a separate link, and then an attendee link. So those are the three links that you need to be aware of that are different to send out to each individual. So that's it. This webinar is now scheduled out for 11 to 12 p.m. on Tuesday, May the 30th. So that gives me a bit of time since I'm recording now, if this was to be a live webinar, to go out to my audience and promote this webinar with whatever the, the, the big promise or the call to action is so I, I can actually get people to sign up to this webinar. But if you're using a webinar for your online business, you might be thinking, is webinar right for me or is meetings right for me? To boil it down, simply put, a webinar is one-way communication. So you actually wanna have your attendees on the call, but you're, they're just listening in um, and they're just watching, maybe if you're sharing some slides. If you want more interaction with them, if you want breakout rooms, a meeting might be better for you. A meeting is more for a two-way uh, communication. So. If you want something to go out to your audience and you don't want to be interrupted by the video and the audio popping on all the time, a webinar is probably your best bet. But if not, if you want that interaction, it could be a meeting that could be right for you. So now for some context, I'm gonna schedule out a meeting and it's a little bit simpler. So just schedule uh, a meeting. It's slightly different settings here. 
Um, again, I would probably have a waiting room. Um, I'm, I'm gonna schedule it out for, let's say the same day, uh, another hour, my meeting, I'm gonna put test. So I know the difference, the webinar is called my meeting. Um, I probably wouldn't put a passcode on. I'd probably just give a waiting room uh, and require authentication. So basically they need to sign into Zoom. I prefer them to have to sign into Zoom rather than faff around with any meeting codes. So once they're signed into Zoom, they go into a waiting room, which I'm gonna show you in a second that you can actually then invite them into the meeting room. Um, so hosts and panelists, you, you could have the video on or, or uh, for participants or hosts, but I'm just gonna leave it like that for now and just click save. So I've scheduled out my meeting and I've scheduled out my webinar. And so what I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna switch on over and try and log in uh, and start my webinar and then start my meeting um, at different times and then show you the differences between the two. And I'm also gonna try and sign in as a third party just to show you the, some of the functionalities within each different Zoom webinar versus Zoom meeting. Okay, so here I am. I've just signed in to the webinar just to show you the different functionality of what a webinar is and what a meeting room is. So this is the webinar and a couple of things here. Uh, if you click on the participants, this box is going to be slightly different to a meeting room. So as you can see here, you've got panelists and attendees. Now, uh, if I had a co-host or if I had someone presenting this with me or any other panelists, they would appear here in this drop down. And if I had any attendees, they would all appear in here. So a webinar is really good for if you had 100, 200, 300, uh, a lot of people actually signing in uh, and listening to what you have to say, they would just appear here and you can just concentrate on what you're delivering. But if you remember, we actually had a practice session here. So it, this is saying you are in a practice session. Just remember, you can actually go for a practice session with anyone that you're hosting the webinar with, but until you hit this button, the webinar hasn't started. And again, it webinar hasn't been recorded if you've set it up that way. So what I wanna do is once I'm ready and once I've chatted to the co-host, then we can start the webinar. And then what you'll see is the attendees will start to filter in as they come through. So another few things here, you, they can raise their hand. So obviously they can't have mic or video on. If you've set it like that, they can raise their hand and you can answer questions. Or a good one here is uh, chat. If they select everyone in the chat, you, you're gonna see all their chats come through. And here, this is the difference. You have a and a box with a webinar. So if you want them to submit questions, just say, please submit your questions in the Q&A box and we'll get to them as we can but any chat, use the chat. So if you're asking them questions like, where are you from, where are you dining in from, uh, they can then just pop the that answer uh, into the chat. But if they have a specific question they wanna ask, make sure that they pop out the Q&A and use that box. And then when you wanna start the webinar, just click started. And if I had people signing in as attendees to this, you would just see them tick over here. So attendee one, two, three, four, as they've been in the waiting room. But uh, there, there's none on this. If you, obviously I'm on mute now, otherwise I get a bit of feedback, um, but obviously you, you need to be unmuted. And then obviously you need to um, have either your video on or if, or if you're sharing screen or anything like that. Uh, so if I shared my uh, my desktop, which is literally just the, the Zoom going live, then you can share your desktop with them. Uh, and then that is what they will see. So I'm just gonna stop sharing. That is pretty much the, the main functionality of a webinar room. Now, what I'm gonna be doing now is switching over into a meeting room and show you the difference between the two. Okay, so now I'm inside a Zoom meeting and it's slightly different, but it's got very different functionalities. So again, I'm inside the meeting room. I've, I've muted my microphone and muted my video because I get quite a bit of feedback. But here, if you click on participants, it's slightly different. So you're just gonna have a drop down of participants. There is no differentiating factor between um, the presenters, versus the attendees, like the panelists or the attendees. You can just invite everyone onto here and they'll just start coming through. Now, if you've enabled a waiting room, you will have to authorize them to come through, but then they can actually turn their microphone on and their camera on. So just imagine more uh, more people will join this screen. And then obviously, as more people join, uh, those little tiles of people will actually start to get smaller. So this is where you can hold better two-way meetings. Just think of it like you're meeting someone face-to-face -face and you're having a chat their video is on, their audio is on. Uh, you don't have the Q&A box enabled or uh, available for the meeting. Uh, you do, however, have a chat, so you can actually use the chat through here. 
And again, similar to Zoom uh, webinars, you can hit the record function and you've got other reactions and everything like that. But the main thing is you don't have a Q&A box and this is more interactive. So have a think about which one would be best for you, what you're trying to do. Have a think about what you are trying to do when you're going out to your audience. Do you have a handful of uh, people that you actually want some interaction with? Then maybe a Zoom meeting is good for you. Um, or if you have a, a slightly large audience and you just want one-way communication, um, with them having the ability to chat and ask Q&A, maybe Zoom webinar is for you. So there we have it. Hopefully that helps and it's answered your question. What is the difference between the two, the webinars and the meetings, and actually which is best for you? As always, I have a free gift for you. Uh, if you head on over to timpeakman.com forward slash tools, you can get a copy of my download of all the tools that I use for my online business. Now, Zoom uh, meetings and webinars is a tool that I use to run my online business. But if you wanted to get a list of all of them, it's a simple checklist that you can go through and see uh, if there's ones that you're using or ones that you should be using. Um, just for peace of mind, go to timpeakman.com forward slash tools to get your copy today. And I look forward to seeing you on another video soon.